Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this video, we are going to calculate the maximum shear force and moment resultant from a point load applied to a beam by drawing the shear force diagram and moment diagram associated with this condition. This question forms part of the structural mechanics section of the PE exam. This problem was created and solved by engineering training Enrique Ivers and is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. In the problem shown, we're asked to calculate the maximum shear force and the maximum moment experienced by the beam in the diagram to the right. We're given four options a maximum shear force of 8 kips and a maximum moment of 40 kip feet, a maximum shear force of 32 kips and a maximum moment of 160 kip feet, a maximum shear force of 32 kips and a maximum moment of 200 kip feet, and a maximum shear force of 40 kips and a maximum moment of 800 kip feet. Looking at the diagram to the right, we see that the beam is 25 feet in length. We're going to call this L. And there's a 40 kip point load, P, applied 20 feet to the right of the pin support on the left, which we will call A. Accordingly, since the beam is 25 feet long, the point load is 5 feet away from the roller support on the right, which we will refer to as point B. We'll fill in the diagram with our labels for ease of reference as we work through this problem. So the shear force at the left pin support, which we will call V sub A, is equal to the reaction force at that point, which we're calling R sub A. This force is calculated by the equation R sub A equals P times B divided by L, where P is the point load, 40 kips, B is the distance between the load and support B, and L is the total length of the beam. Writing the equation out, we'll substitute in our known values, again 40 kips for P, 5 feet for B, and 25 feet for L. And we find that the reaction force at support A is 8 kips. We could go through this process and do the same thing for point B, but as the forces must be in equilibrium, and this is a very simple problem, we know that the reactionary force at support B must be equal to the difference between the force at uh, point A and the point load P. Subtracting 40 kips by 8 kips, so subtracting P by A, we find this, that this force at support B is 32 kips. Similar how V sub A uh, it was equal to the reaction force at point A, V sub B, or the shear force at point B, is equal to the reaction force at point B. So the shear force at support B is 32 kips. We can check this by using the process that we used to calculate point A by multiplying the 40 kips by 20 feet and divided by 25 feet. So in this check, uh, we see that 32 kips is the correct value. Now, although not required for the problem as it is written, uh, you may be asked in other problems to select the appropriate shear diagram on the PE exam. So it might be a point and click style uh, problem. It might be something where it's included in the answers and you have to select it from multiple choice. Uh, but because of that, we are going to go through the process and create the shear diagram for this problem. 
So recall that shear diagrams are linear, whereas moment diagrams are parabolic. In a problem with uniform loads, you would see the linear shear diagram exhibiting a non-zero slope. So the, uh, the line for shear would not be horizontal, but in this case, because we only have one single point load, we are going to see a shear diagram where the uh, line has a slope of zero. So since we're tracing the impact of the load, the impact of the point load is going to be apparent in the diagram at that specific point. And we're going to see the uh, horizontal line shift downward uh, to make that apparent. So let's take a look and we'll draw the shear diagram directly below the force diagram. So it will show up here on the right. This will make it very easy to correlate between the three points of force. So the first point of force or the first load on the structure is at point A. So this is our shear force A, V sub A, and that is eight kips. This force is acting upwards, so it raises the shear force diagram from zero kips to positive eight kips at point A. Accordingly, we draw a vertical line representing this. The shear force then remains constant as we move from the left to the right until we hit the point load of 40 kips, which is acting downward. So it's acting in the opposite direction of the force at point A. Accordingly, we draw a horizontal line with a slope of zero until we reach this location. When we hit point P, this will cause the shear force diagram to drop down by the magnitude of that point load, 40 kips, which will result in a new value of negative 32 kips. So we have our positive 8 kips, which was the force from point A, minus the 40 kips, and we're subtracting because this is a downward force in the opposite direction, giving us negative 32 kips. Just like at point A, where we drew a line showing the change from zero kips to positive eight kips, we draw a vertical line showing the change or the transition from positive eight kips to negative 32 kips, resultant from the 40 kip downward point load. We continue to draw our horizontal line from left to right until we hit support B, where the third force is. This is the 32 kip force pointing upwards. Now, when we add this 32 kip force pointing upwards, this is a positive value. So we're adding the positive 32 kips to the negative 32 kips, and this results in the shear diagram ending up back at zero. If you don't end up back at zero, that means you made uh, an arithmetic mistake somewhere. So now that we're done calculating the maximum shear and, the, and drawing the shear diagram, we'll calculate the maximum moment. And just like we did the exercise with the shear diagram, we'll also draw the moment diagram because that may be something that you come across on the exam. Since we're only interested in the maximum moment, we can use the maximum moment equation. M sub max equals P times A times B divided by L where P is the point load, A is the distance between support A and the point load, B is the distance between support B and the point load, and L is the length of the beam. We substitute in our known values, so 40 kips for P, 20 feet for A, 5 feet for B, and 25 feet for L. We find the maximum moment to be 160 kip feet. We can check this actually by finding the moment at point P for both the reaction forces A and B. Now we can use our moment equation as a quick check to verify this. I'm not going to write this out because it's just a check, but when we take the reaction force A of 8 kips and multiply it by the distance between the point load and the support, we obtain our moment at that point and that is 160 kip feet. Similarly, we do the same thing for the reaction force at B, the 32 kips, which is five feet away from the point load. We also see that that is 160 kip feet. So we've 
conducted our check there and everything uh, comes out okay. Knowing that our maximum moment is 160 kip feet, we can draw our moment diagram. Recall that the magnitude of the moment at the supports is going to be zero, it has to be zero. And the maximum moment coincides with the location of the point load. Just like the shear diagram, we will draw this directly underneath the force diagram. On a piece of paper, it would probably make sense to draw this underneath the shear diagram that you drew directly underneath the uh, force diagram. We'll start by drawing a line connecting uh, the support at point A, where the moment is zero, to a point directly underneath point load P, where the maximum moment of 160 feet occurs. We'll then connect that point, which we show as being 160 feet, and point B with another linear line completing our moment diagram. So again, for this problem, writing or drawing out the moment diagram and the shear diagram wasn't necessary, but it helps us understand the problem and it may be necessary on other problems of this type. So looking at our answer choices, we know that our maximum shear force is 32 kips. This eliminates options A and D, so now we have to choose between options B and C. Since option B has our correct maximum moment of 160 kip feet, this is the correct answer. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will solve more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will be published weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. This exam means everything to your career. And please ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam. Thank you.